parameters that are used in illumination. Uh, but before that, uh, there are a few problems here. I think uh, this one we had discussed the first day. Uh, then this one. <clears throat> you can see here, uh, it's given that a mercury lamp has four lines in the visible spectrum at this wavelength with radiant power density this. Assuming that 30% of the input power density to the lamp in the visible lines compute the lumen per square centimeter emitted by the lamp and the lamp's luminous efficacy in lumen per watt. Uh, but before that, do you have any question from the last two days discussion? Any of you? Okay, I think no. So uh, let's go to this problem. As you can see that there are four lines, means four emission lines in the visible spectrum at 404.7, 435.8, 546.1 and 578 nanometers. So this is completely discrete spectrum, all are line. There is no such continuous spectrum that you can see here, right? <clears throat> and the respective values of the radiant power at those four wavelengths are also given as 1, 0 0.8, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 milliwatt per square centimeter. That means from the per square centimeter area of the source, 1 milliwatt is coming as radiant power. At 435.8 from per square centimeter area of the light, or the lamp 0.8 milliwatt is coming like that. So assuming that 30% of the input power density to the lamp is in this visible lines. That means whatever be the electrical power, 30% of that is coming as the output power. So if my input is 100 watt, I am getting 30 watt as the radiant power like that. So you have to compute the lumen per square centimeter emitted by the lamp. Okay. We know the radiant power coming from the source. We have to calculate light or lumen per square centimeter emitted by the lamp and the luminous efficacy means what is the output by input of the source in lumen per watt. Okay. Output by input, we can that, that's given 30% output, 100% input, but that is the radiant power, UV plus visible plus higher. We have to calculate the visible part. That's why it's lumen per watt, luminous efficacy. Uh, so the problem is given here. You can see the table. Excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am. Uh-huh. Uh, Amadan Keshujan add her journal just a good thing. I have to admit for an event. That we can to the catch in a okay. You can to ask Sina Kyo Kao Karibar Bolo exit Korea Arab try code. <coughs> okay, so Ashukoda Kurbo Tapper. Anyway, so if you look at this table, you can see the first two uh, rows, uh, the first two columns that is the given data 404.7 to 578 and the respective radiant power. Okay, then the third one, which is V lambda, that is also given data. And what is V lambda? V lambda is the spectral sensitivity function of human eye or cone cell or for photopic vision means how much you can see in this particular wavelength what is the sensitivity function or v lambda at 404.7 or 435.8 or 578 like that so what is uh, 0 0.008 
0.0018, so where it is one i mean can you explain anyone if you remember this is the normalized values right <clears throat> So if you can remember this V lambda function, this one, you can see uh, this is from 0 to 0 in between 380 to 780. So it's increasing from 380, the peak is at 555, again it is decreasing. Okay. So the uh, value is 1 for the normalized curve, this one is at 555 nanometer. Okay. So that's why you can see here near 555 at 546, it's 0 0.979. Okay. So what we have to calculate? We have to calculate the total uh, output, right? So this is the given wavelength. This is the given radiant power. This is the I sensitivity function. So from there, we can calculate how much we can see out of the total radiant power. So you multiply this four, then we will get these values, V lambda, M lambda. Okay. These four values. Now we have to calculate uh, total lumen. So total lumen, this one is total output. You multiply this one with 683, we will get the visible part. Okay. If you remember this function, this one radiant power into I sensitivity and multiply with 683. So you will get the total light output in lumen. Jodi only a part tamra calculate kori, we will get the visible part in watt. Okay, you multiply with 683 lumen per watt, so we will get the visible part in lumen. <clears throat> okay, so this is the first one, which is the lumen per square centimeter emitted by the lamp. So from the lamp, we will get 0.198 lumen per square centimeter. Okay. Next, we have to calculate the luminous efficacy or the output by input. So output we know it's 0.198 lumen per centimeter square. And what is the input power? Input power, you can see it's not given here. I mean, electrical power koto input. But ki na radiant power. If you add them, you will get 2.1. Uh, a 2.1 ta total input power is 30%. Okay, total electrical input is 30% the output radiant power. So this is this 30%. Mane total is 7. So my output light is 0 0.198. Input electrical power is 7. So this is the lumen per watt. 28. Okay. Any question? Anyone? Boja gets a shop at Karo kichu question nahi? Kyo response to gado? Mane aami line e aachi kine connected aachi kine shetai pe bushti bhaat chini. Dibani Gopal Haan, bolo. Naam aam bushti bhaat chini. So uh, next is an idealized spectral power distribution curve, watt per square centimeter per 10 nanometer of a combined continuous spectrum and line spectrum shows. I'll say take me the warning.
if you see this one the spectral distribution of a light source is given the photopic spectral luminous efficiency function is also given you have to find the luminous flux output of the source okay <clears throat> so you can see the first one this is the spectral power distribution of a particular source and this is the some given uh, sensitivity function v lambda so from here you have to compute the total light output so from 0 to 1 you can see this is the light output from the source at the same time this is the sensitivity function for 1 to 1.5 this one for that part this is the v lambda for 1.5 to 2 this is the v lambda so you multiply this then again multiply with 683 you will get the total luminous um, flux okay uh, so next we can move to um, luminous intensity last day we discussed the luminous flux and luminous efficacy and illuminance next one is luminous intensity so uh, just for luminous intensity we need an idea about solid angle so all of us know about the plane angle, right? This is the angle subtended at a point by two converging lines lying in the same plane. This is the plane angle. And what is solid angle? This is the angle subtended by the partial surface of a sphere at its center. If you want to find the angle subtended by this closed curve at the center of the sphere around this surface, this entire angle, this is the solid angle. The unit is terradian and equal to the ratio of the area A by R square. Omega is A by R square, the unit is terradian. So what is the uh, solid angle for the entire sphere? It's 4 pi R square by R square, so 4 pi. So 4 pi is the solid angle subtended by the entire area of the full sphere. <coughs> Uh, so why we need this luminous intensity? What is luminous intensity? This is uh, another parameter. It is the property of a source. It's in, in any particular direction. It is defined as the luminous flux emitted by the source per unit solid angle. So last day we discussed the luminous flux. That means what is the total light output from the source? Next parameter was illuminance, how much light is coming to my work surface, the received light at any surface per meter square or per feet square, whatever. Luminous intensity is how the light is distributed around the source. Suppose if a, uh, light is glowing, a lamp is glowing at your house, of course the light is coming towards the down sphere, right? If you look at your uh, lamp at your house or PG mess, whatever, you will see that the light is not going to the upper hemisphere, right? It's coming to the down hemisphere only. But there are such some lamps where the light is distributed uh, uniformly in the entire hemisphere, right? So this is how the light is distributing around the source. That property is the luminous intensity. If you... Uh, can remember the luminous, uh, sorry, that this tungsten filament lamp, we know that the filament, filament is glowing, the light will be distributed around this uh, bulb, right? A very less amount of light will come towards this, towards this holder, right? So this is how the light is distributed around the luminous intensity. So if you see the definition, this is the luminous flux emitted by the source per unit solid angle. So if you look at this light source from this side, luminous intensity will be the light coming to your eyes by the solid angle subtended by your eyes. So this, if you look from this side, the solid angle subtended by your eye, that is the omega or solid angle, light that part is the luminous intensity phi by omega the unit is lumen per steradian or candela 
So this is used to quantify the distribution of light from a luminaire or from a source. So intensity distribution curve, this is an important parameter. Uh, this intensity distribution curve tells us about how the light is distributed around the source. For example, uh, if we if you use a lamp for a street light, or if you use the same lamp for uh, any playground, for cricket field, for football field, for tennis field, all the applications are different, right? So which lamp will be used in which application, which luminaire will be used in which particular application for that, we need to see this luminous distribution curve. If you uh, remember the spotlight in any shopping mall, any museum, those kind of applications. So there some small uh, object is uh, illuminated by a source. The light distribution is very narrow. The distribution will be something like this, narrow distribution. Okay, but for the uh, halogen lamp, the distribution is like this. A beam is very wide. So which kind of lamp will be used in which application? For that, we need to see the intensity distribution curve of the source, how the light is distributed in the entire hemisphere. If you uh, see this uh, tube light, the light will be distributed, of course, in the down hemisphere like this. In the upper hemisphere, there is nothing, it's zero. So that's why this is the line, how the light will be distributed around the source. The source is located here. Okay. This is also called as polar curve of a filament lamp. So any given light source has many different intensities depending upon the direction. <clears throat> Since light is not emitted uniformly in all directions by lamp, due to its unsymmetrical shape. So while designing any electrical installation, it's essential to know how the light is distributed. Means depending upon our requirement, we need to select the exact luminaire depending upon their intensity distribution. So this information is usually given in the form of polar curve. So this is called intensity distribution curve or polar curve. You can see a few angles here. So zero means just below the lamp. If the lamp is uh, hanging at a point. Zero is just below the lamp. Then we are moving towards the upper hemisphere in anti-clock direction. So this is 30 degrees, 60 degree. Here it is 90 degree. Above it's 180. Here it is 270. Then again zero. Okay. So in the upper hemisphere, there is no light. The entire light will be in the down hemisphere for this particular lamp. Uh, so, any question from this luminous intensity? This is mean spherical candle power. It is the average luminous intensity of a light source in all directions in space. Uh, next one is luminance. Uh, if you see this figure, luminous flux is the total light output from any source, the unit is lu uh, lumen, right? <clears throat> this is luminous flux, total light output in all the directions. This is the property of the source. Next one is luminous intensity. This is the light coming towards a particular direction per unit solid angle. So when we talk about the light in, in any particular direction, that is the luminous intensity. Illuminance is completely the received light on the surface. So what is the total light output on, on this surface? That is the luminous flux falling over the surface per unit area. That is the illuminance. Now what is luminance? Luminance is if we look towards any source, towards any object or anything, luminance is how much light is coming to my eye. So if someone is looking towards this surface, so this parameter we call as luminance. If you look towards the source, that will be the source luminance. 
So this is defined as the luminous intensity per unit projected area of either a surface or a source or any illuminated surface. So it gives us appearance how much a subject is brighter than other. The unit is candela per meter square. So this is the I towards any direction. But a I tami koto area te dekchi. See this I by A, this is the luminance. Okay. मैं Towards this direction, a dash theta हो जो दी a है, हम जो दी a dash area आते देखी, so a cos theta, माने projected area को तो टा आच्छे। Suppose if someone looks at uh, this paper, the value is 48 candela per meter square, माने आमी paper के रही area थी के को तो टा light आच्छे, I intensity by area that is 48 candela per meter square. For this table top, it's 40. This paper, it's 60. If you look towards this wall, it will be five thousand like this. <clears throat> That means total light output from the source is luminous flux. The luminous flux per unit solid angle, lumen per meter square, uh, lumen per sorry, lumen per square radian. That is luminous intensity. Received light, lumen per meter square. That is lux, and candela per meter square. That is luminance. So I expect any question. Anyone? कारो कि नहीं मैं सब क्लियर भेरि बेसिक और बाकी जा सिलेबस प्रब्लेम आज सब तो पैरामिटर गो दिए ना सो इफ यू मैं जो क्लियर ना प्रब्लेम क्वेश्चन प्लीज आस्क देवानी गोपाल अभिजीत राजर्षी कथा तुम्हारा आने तुम्हें कारो किस क्वेश्चन नहीं मैम नहीं तो खूब भलो सो ठीक तो नेक्स्ट स्लाइड दिस इज सम टिपिकल इल्यूमिनेंस एंड लुमिनेंस जस्ट फॉर योर आइडिया क्लियर स्काई इन सामार इट्स लाइक वन लुमेन पर मीटर स्कोर बड़े वालूज Luminous values will be high for glossy surface, but if it's glossy surface, so it's also the reflected light will be higher. So uh, you can see for black road surface, it's point one. Concrete, it's two. Glass, jodi ha, aro high ho be light grey cloth one forty, white paper one twenty like this. Okay, so in darker surfaces, jo no the value will be lesser for. Uh, white surface, glossy surfaces, you know, the value will be higher. <clears throat> so next is the uh, comparison of radiometry and photometry. Already we discussed all these parameters, but the difference is this: radiometry is comprised of UV, visible, and IR, whereas photometry is only the visible part. So which is radiant energy? Here it is called luminous energy. The radiant flux. This is called luminous flux. I mean, UV, IR, ta baad diye. 
this one is irradiance this one is illuminance so what will be the irradiance at this surface the total received radiant flux per meter square money ub flux visible flux ir flux by meter square that is the irradiance but if you talk about the visible only that will be the illuminance similarly radiant intensity luminous intensity radiance and luminance radiance is watt per meter square per steradian eta hocche lumen per meter square per steradian ba candela per meter square okay uh, so next is two properties of any light source which is cri and cct probably you heard these terms in your lab that is color rendering index and correlated color temperature cri and cct these are completely the property of any lamp <clears throat> uh, so CRI, uh, this is the measure of the degree of color shift of objects undergo when illuminated by the light source as compared with the color of those same objects when illuminated by a reference source of comparable color temperature. So for example, uh, if you go under any decorative lighting, Diwali lighting, lighting if you cannot identify the exact color of your dress right uh, or if you go to any vegetable market you will see the colors are very much glowing colorful that is because of this property of the source the color rendering index we see the color of the object in different form under different source due to the property color rendering index how the object color is uh, looking under any kind of source now that depends upon this spectral power composition of any source so if you uh, look at the spectral power distribution under daylight you can identify exact color of any object because in the daylight all the colors are present so how can you identify any red color anyone Jekuno color, for example, red. Read the camera, red cano the key. Kuno source and under key. Anyone? Hello? Kira to choto bala question na, mane ten eleven age chilo. Ma'am, wavelength ta utar beshi hoy, ujon nai beshi choke reflect kora ujon nai dekhte hoy. Na, tarle to blue er kam, tarle blue ke blue kena dekhi amra. Abar tumi yellow street light er andar e jao, shikhan e dekbe thik thak dekhte pao jai na, tai na? Ha ma'am. Can anyone? But daylight, we can identify. Yeah, no, red. Our baki wavelength will absorb. Ob, kore na is shei karon ne shud red te reflect kore. Exactly. Mane uh, suppose for daylight, you can identify any color because for daylight the SPD is continuous. All the colors or any combination is possible. All the seven colors are present here. So it will reflect any color of the object. Mane red thakle red ta ekhane ache so. All the other colors will be absorbed, the red will be reflected, so you can identify the red or any other color. But if you see the low pressure sodium vapor lamp, the red is not present here. So, of course, it cannot uh, reflect the red light because uh, Sudhumatri yellow object to the low pressure sodium vapor under the asset, then only you can identify exactly the yellow color. All the other colors will be absorbed under that light. So, depending upon the SPD of the light source, we can ident identify or distinguish the color of the objects for tungsten filament lamp again it's continuous all the colors are present so you can identify any object color for mercury vapor or hypersodium sodium vapor metal halide this few colors are present few are missing here so jiglo present you can identify those object colors which are missing here those cannot be identified 
so that's why for any decorative lighting depending upon the color present in that light of the source you can identify the color of your dress jodi oi color ta na thake it will be distorted and you will see something else so under lopsa sodium paper lamp you cannot identify red or blue green like that so <clears throat> crra is this property uh how much we can identify the exact color of the light source eta koto ta render korbe exact color ke that is the cri so for daylight it's maximum so it's 100 so with respect to 100 amra baki gulo ke express kori so this is the measure of the degree of color shift objects undergo when illuminated by any light source as compared with the reference source like daylight So when it's between eighty-five to hundred, excellent color rendition means means it will re render maximum colors of the object. If it's like zero to fifty, it's poor color rendition because maximum color will be distorted. So the same object under three different source, you can see it's under ninety uh, CRI. So the colors are visible in brightly. If the eighty high, so that's okay. Come, but when it's sixty, it's dull. Like the colors are distorted. Okay. Uh, so again, the same objects under CFL, metal halide, and LED. For LED, the CRI is ninety high CRI, eighty metal halide, seventy for CFL. So you can see under CFL how the colors are looking, and under LED how the colors are looking. Okay. So, big be jewelry shop. It's how yellow is light. Laga na thakye. So. as the light is yellow so all the golden colors or bright colors will be visible in more bright form if you go to the vegetable market so can kya na blue is light lagana tha ke but green is type lagana tha ke so all the vegetables will be aro beshi blue aro beshi green dekhte lagbe okay so depending upon the application the lights are used je kan our natural light lagbe like office room classrooms hospital lighting uh, playground so in all those areas we use natural light okay with high cri as the colors are exactly identify mane dhor cricket field le ki hoy na almost 90 above cri chai because tumi ota hd tv te dekhabe so to get the exact color in hd tv uh, we need to identify the colors in exact form so that's why the lamps with high cri are used in those kind of applications for street light street light is, to identify the object is important color identification is not that much important so we can go for uh, low cri sodium vapor lamps like that okay <clears throat> next one is cct uh, cct is again another lamp parameters which is the absolute temperature of a black body whose color appearance most nearly resembles that of the light source So CRI is how the objects are visible under any light source. CCT is how we quantify the light coming from the source, whether it's bluish or yellowish light like that. So if you remember that example, if you uh, increase the temperature of a iron rod, it will be uh, reddish, yellowish, white, then bluish white. The temperature is increasing, so the color from the light is also increasing. similarly we express the color of the light output from any source in correlated color temperature like cct so from the name you can see we are correlating the color of the light source with the temperature of the black body how <coughs> for example if the uh, cct of any light source is 3500 k that means if the temperature of the black body is 3500 k there will be some emission from the black body there will be color of that emission oi color ta or e source er color ta these are same so we are correlating the temperature of the black body with the color of the source so that's why it is called correlated color temperature so at higher temperature it will be bluish right so for example it is 5000 k so when the black body temperature is 5000 k the color of that light or amar je light er ami 5000 k bolchi those color will be same 
so that means we are correlating the color of the light source with the temperature of the black body so that's why it is called cct now if it is less than 3000 it is called warm between 3500 to 4500 this is called neutral or uh, more than 4000 hole eta ke bole cool so this is warm white when it is less than 3000 k less than 3000 k means the temperature is less it is be yellowish light then for cool white when it is more than 4000 kelvin the temperature is increasing so it will be moving towards bluish type of light it is called cool white and more than 5000 it will be arrow blue is like that so it is called daylight if you uh, see the packet of any cfl or led that we use in our house you can see the warm light or cool light is given so warm light means it will be yellowish light as the cool light huh? it will be like natural daylight so it is the same room under different lamp with daylight with cool white and with warm white so you can see the candle 1900k this is warm light completely yellowish the temperature is increasing with the sorry the cct is increasing you can see this one 5000k cool light and under 10000k this is completely blue sky okay so the cct and cri these two are the property of any light source <coughs> So, as I explained the um, relation between the CRI and SPD, that if SPD is continuous, my CRI will be higher. If SPD is discrete, CRI will be less. So, can you explain the relation between CCT or SPD? Is there any relation? What do you think? CRI or SPD, continuous will high CRI, how about discrete low CRI like that. Do you think is there any relation between CCT and SPD. Anyone? Ma'am. Hmm. Ma'am, CCD is it color temperature that is set up. Yes, Yes, so lambda less means the car will be shifted towards the lower wavelength region, towards bluish color, right? If if the CCT is high, this will be shifted towards the lower wavelength region. If the CCT is less, T is less, lambda will be higher. That means the car will be shifted towards the higher wavelength region. So if uh, the CCT is high. Like if it is cool light, 5000K, 4000K, 6000K. So from there, you can see that T is high, lambda will be less. That means the lower wavelength component will be more in the spectrum. And uh, the CCT less high, like warm color high, that means T is high, so lambda will be, uh, sorry, T is less, so lambda will be in higher side. That means higher wavelength component will be there. Now blue, uh, sorry, uh, yellow, red, this component will be more, right? So <clears throat> from this example, cool white LED and warm white LED, suppose for this cool white, it will be around 5000 K. And for warm white LED, it will be uh, something near 3000, 2000 K. So you can see the difference. For cool white, temperature is higher. So peak wavelength less. So the this will be shifted towards the lower wavelength region. Maximum radiation to have a lower wavelength region. For warm white LED, less CCT. So high value of uh, the peak wavelength, more amount of radiation in the higher wavelength region. So the car will shifted towards the higher wavelength region. Okay. 
So from this example, you can explain cool white LED and warm white LED. <clears throat> so if you see any bulb at your house, you can see it's uh, written like 36 watt, 220 to 240 volt, 50 hertz, and 5000 K. So from the first three specification, you can you know what are the electrical specification. From 5000 K, you can understand it's a cool light. So without providing power, you know what is 36 watt, you know what is 230 volt. Similarly, you know that if I provide power to the lamp, the light will be bluish white. It's cool light. Okay. So next time, see the lighting specification of the lamps too. Along with the wattage, you can see the K value, CCT value of the source. OK. So any question up to this from the parameters? Anyone? Illuminance, luminance, CCT, CRI, SPD? Ma'am, CCT is a direct to Bulwin. CCT is a correlated color temperature. We are correlating the color of light source with the temperature of the black body. For example, we have a LED bulb. It is a bluish type. Okay? So the CCT of this bluish bulb is around 4500K. So that doesn't mean that the actual temperature of this LED bulb is 4500K. It means if the temperature of the black body is 4500K, there will be some radiation from the black body. It will have some kind of color of that light. We color ta or our body bulb color ta duto same. Okay, means we are correlating the color of this bulb with the temperature of the black body to get an idea. Just to quantify the color. Mane, basic yellow, basic cool, basic blue, how to quantify. To quantify color zone, our CCT use code chi. <coughs> So if you see this uh, metal halide, it's from 4000 to 4500K CCT. Mane, ita paar chho, metal halide teke, I need to white light power. Okay. And how to explain this 4000K? Mane, this black body temperature 4000K hai. Okhan teke je color ta hai, aray metal halide ke color ta both are same. Okay. For the tungsten filament lamp, this one, you can see it's 2700 to 3000K. We know that for filament lamp, it's CLO is light. No? So why it's 3000K? Because uh, black body temperature is 2700 to 3000K high. That is black body is the same color as me. Okay. In condition, the temperature is not 2700 or 3000 Kelvin. If the black body temperature is this, we will get the same color. So, when you 36 watts, you can see what is the input power. Similarly, if you see this, 2700K is written on the lamp. So you know that the color will be yellow is white. Okay. Okay, ma'am. And Kichuke? Ma'am, Taolo is CCT as CRI and the basic difference to go there. Two to Alada genes. CCT hoche lamp color ta kilo comami dekchi, set a quantify gochi, a siara hoche lamp ta niche ami kono color ke kibabe dekta babo, kono object ke kibabe identify kotu babo, set out a siara. The shop kitchen picked a identify koraja so halova render coach at a siara will be higher. I lamp color ta kama ke quantify kotu that is CCT. Man, Talki CCT or CRI and Mudukono direct correlation book is what? Say Babe name because I'm talking just to the example. I can add it a very for a incandescent bulb, it's two seven three thousand key. Take a chair. CRI ki high na low tungsten filament er what do you think tungsten filament continuous spd daylight er moto tahole sob color ache so CRI will be 100 maximum CRI thik ache 
আবার দেখো সেম ওই একই রেঞ্জের সিসিটি হাই প্রেসার সোডিয়াম পেপার ল্যাম্প এটাও ইয়েলো স্লাইড বিকজ একই টাইপের সিসিটি বাট এর সিআরআই খুব কম বিকজ এর এসপিডি হচ্ছে ডিসকন্টিনিউয়াস বোথ ডিসক্রিট অ্যান্ড কন্টিনিউয়াস অনেক কালার মিসিং আছে না স্ট্রিট লাইটে আমার ইয়েলো স্ট্রিট লাইট যেরকম হয় সো অলদো দুটোর সিসিটি সেম বাট সিআরআই ইজ কমপ্লিটলি ডিফারেন্ট Similarly, the incandescent, if you see the incandescent bulb and the, this daylight, it's very less, 3000K, it's a high 6000K, but still both have same CRI 100. And the CCT CRI is a direct relation. If you explain the CCT to the SPD, you can explain the CRI to the SPD, but the CCT CRI is not comparable. প্যারামিটারেশন নেক্সট ইস ল অফ ইলুমিনেশন এখানে তিনটে আছে ইউ ক্যান সি দি ইনভার্স স্কোয়ার ল ল্যাম্বার স্কোয়ার কোসাইন ল ইনভার্স স্কোয়ার কোসাইন কিউব ল বোথ আর সেম জাস্ট ইন ডিফারেন্ট ফর্ম সো হোয়াট ইজ ইনভার্স স্কোয়ার ল সো দিস থ্রি ল গিভ এন আইডিয়া অ্যাবাউট হাউ দ্য লুমিনাস ইন্টেনসিটি অ্যান্ড ইলুমিনেন্স ভ্যারিজ উইথ দ্য ডিস্টেন্স ফ্রম দ্য সোর্স উই নো দ্যাট ইফ ইউ গো অ্যাওয়ে ফ্রম এনি সোর্স দ্য লাইট লেভেল উইল decrease but how the light level will decrease with the distance as well as the angle that is the inverse square law and the square cosine law or the square cosine cube law <clears throat> so if this is my source a point source the intensity is i0 so the sphere surface area 4 pi r square so how the light will decrease if you go away from the source at a distance r 2 r 3 r like that so it states that the illumination at any point on a surface normal to the light ray varies directly with the luminous intensity i and inversely as the square of the distance between the source and the point so the illumination at any point on a surface normal to the light it varies directly proportional to i and inversely proportional to the square of the distance okay <clears throat> so at this if this is my source at r it will be i by r square at 2r it will be i by 4r r square here it will be i by 9r square like that so it can only be used this is when the light source is approximated as a point source mm, the equation holds uh, okay so not for this law but baki pore jekhane hobe in any figure anywhere you will see all the sources are given as a point source okay but in actual cases these are not point all are extended source right but for approximation we are considering as point source now when we can consider the large body as a, as a point one when the distance is large enough right so when the distance between the source and the point this is more than five times of the diameter of the source we can consider this one as a point source like sun sun the point source no but still we consider as point source because the distance is large enough so large enough means how much now when the distance is at least five times of the diameter of the source five times of the maximum diameter of the source then we can consider that one as point source so this may be a cube light maybe a halogen maybe a led whatever so if the distance is five times of the diameter of the source we are assuming that this one is point source this law is varied for the point source only <clears throat> and the Uh, intensity distribution in different prints must be symmetrical okay so this is my source uh, 
if this distance is 0.5 meter, so if we get 40 lakhs pi, another 0.5 meter we will get one fourth, right? R square. So we will get only 10 lumen per meter square. So E is I by this square. So how that is coming? We know I intensity is lumen per steradian. Again, steradian is area per radius square, A by R square. So from there, again, illuminance is lumen per meter square, luminous flux per unit area. So from there, you can see E is I by R square. This is again another form is Lambert's cosine law. Previously, if this is my source, I was computing the luminance just below this, normal to this point, but to the Onokono direction, like this, like this. So, then how to compute the illuminance at different directions? So, that is the Lambert's cosine law. It states that the illuminance on any surface varies as the cosine of the angle of the incidence. And Inversely to the square of the distance. When you take i by d square, chilo, we ono kono angle measure karo, it will be i cos theta by d square. So if this is i, the illuminance at this point will be i cos theta by d square. This is theta. Uh, this is theta. R is the distance between the source and the point. When age chilo eta chilo r, the distance between the source and the point. E point theta jodi ami theta zero na hoye kono ekta theta value thake. So it, the luminance at point P will be I cos theta by R square. This is my R. <clears throat> this is again the same one. Inverse square cosine law. Just we have uh, expressed this R, R in terms of the height. So, E is I cos theta by H square. Useful extension of the cosine law by substituting H by cos theta for D. The above equation may be written as I cos cube theta by H square. So, if this is the source is you want to calculate uh, at this point, it will be I by D square. If we want to calculate the illuminance at this point, it will be I cos theta by D square. D is always the distance between the source and the point. A point te hole, this is my D, this is D, R. Jodhi A point te calculate korti chau, is I cos theta by D square, this is the distance D. So what is cosine cube law? Just if you express D in terms of H, so it will be I cos cube theta by H square. Okay. So just below the point, it will be I by D square, or any other point will be i cos theta by d square. This is the theta or this one. Um, if you explain that d, if you express d in terms of the mounting height of the source h, it will be i cos cube theta by h square. This is source d. You want to calculate at this point, it will be I cos cube theta by d square. If you source that, it will be I by d square only. Okay. <coughs> So, you have J.B. Gupta power in book, I think, you can see the utilization of the power in the book, and you can see the example of the If you see one example here, a 200 watt tungsten filament lamp is suspended from ceiling of 2.8 meter height over a circular working plane. There is a circular table. The filament lamp is suspended at the center. Height is 2.8 meter. 
মানে মাউন্টিং হাইট ল্যাম্পের ইস টু পয়েন্ট এইট মিটার ওয়ার্কিং প্লেনের ডায়মিটার ইস টু মিটার working table height from the floor is 0.76 meter the lamp is vertically above the center the lamp efficacy is given 0.15 lumen per watt you have to calculate average illuminance illuminance at the center and at periphery so illuminance at center will be of course psi by d square so i is not given one given here can you tell me what will be the i You can take a screenshot or a picture of this problem 3A. Illuminance at center will be I by D square. Illuminance at periphery, I cos theta by D square. Then average illuminance. when another problem is given a luminar of intensity distribution i cos gamma uh, 200 cos gamma is suspended over a rectangular area of this calculate uh, illuminance just below the luminar at the four corner points করে দেখো এগুলো যদি প্রবলেম হয় ইউ ক্যান টেল মি এনি অফ ইউ ক্যান ইউ ক্যান ইউ এক্সপ্লেন দিস কোয়েশ্চেন লুমিনাস ফ্লাক্স আউটপুট অফ এনি ল্যাম্প ডিপেন্ডস অন অবজারভার ভিশন ইজ ইট কারেক্ট কারেক্ট অ্যানার জাস্টিফাই দ্য স্টেটমেন্ট Anyone? Can you explain this one? First of all, is it correct or not? Oh, I think it's correct. Can you explain? Why? <clears throat> so it depends. Uh, it, is, it is actually the power of the light. So it depends on the uh, sensitivity of the human eye. How are I sensitive to uh, light? Yes, it is phi lambda into v lambda. Right. Yes, so it, it depends on the v lambda function, or spectral sensitivity function of human eye. So it depends upon the human eye function. But if it's uh, radiant flux, then it does not depend on the observer vision. This one can you explain? Luminous efficacy of tungsten filament lamp depends on its rated power. Luminous efficacy of tungsten filament lamp depends on its rated power. But uh, if that means if we have two lamps of this 100 watt filament lamp, 200 watt filament lamp, so the uh, question says that the luminous efficacy of 200 watt lamp will be higher. Then the hundred watt lamp. Can anyone explain? <clears throat> 
anyone? You can explain this from Wen's displacement law. Kichu ekta bolo kyo? Higher wattage will higher luminous efficacy. Why? Okay, if you see this line, see, <clears throat> you can see that when uh, higher wattage means current will be higher or less. Okay. The current through filament for 200 watt or 100 watt. Same, less or more key of it. It's not the utilization of the organ, you know? What do you think? The current will be same or less or more? For 200 watt lamp and 100 watt lamp. We have lab from 230. Electrical lab. Electrical lab to me, key lab. Microprocessor lab. Okay. Okay, so better you think whether the current will be same or less or more. Okay. Okay, let me take the screenshot. <coughs> क्यों बोल रहे हैं अपन अरे क्यों किसी तो रेस्पोंस तो कर रहे हैं क्यों फोर्टी कौतुक जन आच्छे फोर्टी थ्री ना कौतुक फोर्टी वन फोर्टी वन फाइन क्या है बेकारिंट Okay, maybe that could I'll ask come Friday. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm closing now. <clears throat>